I see all familiar faces. To be honest, uh, I have never heard of Mike uh, until Tess told me about him. And when he, when she told me about him, I researched extensively and was very impressed. Uh, why a foreigner would be interested in the Philippines and in the Filipino people. Then I saw his books, I saw his uh, talks, and I realized Wow, we should be uh, privileged to have uh, him uh, writing books about the Philippines from the outsider's perspe perspective. Uh, we have read a lot of books by Filipinos about the Philippines, but not too many from Europeans, Americans, Canadians, or any nationality outside the Philippines writing about us. What they all see would be always news, whether that good or bad, on CNN, BBC, in the international scene. But Mike is here, of course, to change all that. First hand, he saw what the potential of a Filipino is, what the potential of the Filipino people is, and we have a lot to be proud of. And for, for Mike to see that and to recognize that, it is something that really personally made my heart uh, full. Uh, we, we are, as a race, we are tagged different ways uh, in different countries we go to. I won't mention what they are, but you know what they are. We go to this country, ah, you're Filipino and black. Yeah. Can be good or bad. So, now Mike is here to answer all your questions, to talk about why he's in UAE for the first time. And I heard it's not... Like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Hindi ko kamo kasi Ed Sheeran. Mas guapo ako. But the question is always why, 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 why? Why do you have so much faith in the Filipino? Why are you living in the Philippines? Why ang kinibu kasan ko sa Pilipinas? So I want, and especially with you overseas Filipinos, I wanted to share why the answer to that question. So, uh, Taga Ireland ako. I'm from Ireland. Um, many thousands of miles away from the Philippines, 7,000 miles. And I have traveled to many different countries. I've lived in America, I've lived in Africa, I worked in a hospital there for two years. I've, lived, I've traveled to many countries in the Middle East, in ASEAN. Peru, the Philippines, has been my number one country that I've ever been to. The Filipino has inspired me more than any other nationality that I've been to. I've been to over 40 different countries. Every country that I've been to, who did I meet in every country? Filipino. The Filipinos are everywhere. Every country in the world. And Pangarapko is Pumata. I want to go to Antarctica, one of my dream countries, to go where the penguins are. And I bet you if I went to Antarctica, I would meet a Filipino there as well. <laughs> Filipinos are everywhere. But I want to highlight overseas Filipinos in particular. In every country that I've been to, I always met a Filipino. And the one question I always ask, Bakit dito? Why are you here? Coach Adam, why are you here in this country? Why are you here, Rico, in this country? Why do you travel to Japan? You travel all these countries, why? And when I hear the stories, a similar pattern comes again and again. Sacrifice, courage, commitment. I cannot think, show me Show me another country that has given more of its people to other countries. That has sacrificed more of its people so that other countries, like the UAE, can become richer. Like my country, Ireland, Taga Ireland Co. If the Filipina nurse decided to take a day off, hospitals in Ireland would shut down. <laughs> Our country, Taga Ireland Co., is just one of the many countries that depend on Filipinos to, for our healthcare. World class Filipinos like you, man. And not just nurses, the best sailors in the world, Filipinos. The best engineers in the world, Filipinos. The best fighters in the world, <laughs> Coach Adam, right. Filipinos. <laughs> Filipinos have made such a positive impact on the entire economy of the world. But amazingly, the place where the Filipinos are sometimes forgotten the most is in their home country, the Philippines. 
So I, I was inspired by OFWs three years ago that, you know what, I want, to, I want to try and live in the Philippines for one month. And if I don't like it, I'll go to another country, maybe Cambodia, Laos, and a different countries that I wanted. But I will try the Philippines for one month. He said go on now. I fell in love. And not with El Nido, not with Barakai, not with Underground River, or the Chocolate Hills, or Anganda, Namagat Panawi, and the Filipinas. Not with this, the beaches, but Ikao, the Filipino people. I tell you the truth. The Filipino people make me a better man. The reason, the number one reason I am staying in the Philippines is because of the Filipino people. I believe that I can become the best version of me, the Filipinas. Not in other countries, but in the Philippines. There's something special with the Filipino people that I have not seen in other countries. So you may be a bit uh, confused. What is so special about the Filipino? So before we do q can I share three things that I see in the Filipino that I do not see in other countries? So example number one, Bayinihan. Alam about Bayinihan? Of course, every Filipino knows Bayinihan. But I want to show, oh, Bayinihan Festival. This December, the big one coming up. I'm excited for that. Will, any way we can help promote us, please let us know. But I want to share one tiny example of Bayanihan that happens every day in the Philippines that most Filipinos don't recognize. And that's Saji. So when I go to any, I go to the metro here, usually you get the tickets, then you go down and sit, usually go to the driver, get a ticket, and then you go down and sit down. Pero sa Filipinas, you have something crazy called Bayipo, where you sit down first and you give your money to a total stranger who would pass it to this person, to this person, to this person. And then, if there's souple, what happens? The driver gives it back to this person, to this person, to this person. For foreigners, we're shocked. Ano ba? Ano ito? How can you trust a total stranger with your money? Because in my country, Ireland, if I ask a stranger, hey, can you pay the driver for me? Hindi puede. Ayoko. Do it yourself. We do not, in my country, and in other countries, we do not have a sense of bayanihan that for Filipinos is so natural. It comes so natural. So that bayanihan spirit just shocked me. Example number two. Masayahin. Alam mo ba? Masayahin? A few years ago, and I think you know this story, something happened in the Philippines that shocked the world. I'm not talking about Duterte. <laughs> I'm not talking about anything political. A few years ago, the greatest storm in history hit the Philippines. Yolanda. The whole world, number one headlines in the world was the Philippines. Beautiful. Millions of people around the world looking at the TV, looking at what was happening in the Philippines. Pray for the Philippines. It broke my heart to see the videos that were coming from the Philippines of total devastation. But I was watching with my mother, and Nanai Ko, and Ermats Ko, she was a bit confused. Because on the faces of the people, it didn't look like the world's greatest storm had hit. Something was on the faces of the Filipinos. They were smiling. They were waving at the cameras. They were singing uh, songs, even though they could have lost everything. They were still smiling. What that taught me is Hindi, Nakatinek, and Busong Filipino. No storm, Yolanda, or any other future storm to hit your beautiful country. No storm is stronger than the Filipino spirit. No storm. Yesterday, uh, I'm so grateful to Gao, Sir Gao from Philcat for promoting this tour and giving me a chance to come and visit the overseas Filipinos. But yesterday, I spent some time with the distressed Filipinos um, in Abu Dhabi in the, in the, who are heartbreaking stories. I'm sure you can relate to some of their stories. 
how they, how they came here with so many dreams and terrible things happened to these beautiful ladies. And let, I was heartbroken when I heard those stories of their dreams being shattered. And what I shared with them is, you may have had a bad experience, but nothing, no bad experience would ever break your spirit. Kase Filipino cat. There's something so, the resilience of the Filipino is far greater than any other nationality. Because my country, Taga Ireland ago, if we were hit by a storm, we would be so angry, we would be blaming God, blaming the governments, blaming everyone. But the Filipino is so positive, so resilient. That's uniquely Filipino. Now one final example, because I, I want to keep this short, because I want to really hear from you is, but the one final Tahilan, why, in my opinion, the Filipino is so special is Walang Iwanan. Walang Iwanan? So the, the example I will give is the airport. Now, OIW, no Epic Sabine OIW, overseas Irish worker, ako. So 11 years I have been out of my homeland. 11 years I've been traveling different countries in the world. Pero every Pasco, every Christmas, I go home to my family to, to, say, to spend time with my family. But I want to sh share something that happens. In the family home, when it's time to say goodbye, I say goodbye in the family home. I say, Ingat mama, ingat papa, talam na, sa susun natin pakikita. My family speak Tagalog, of course. Joke line, charot line. Then, when I say goodbye, tres horas, magisa, sabos, on my own, tres horas, sabos, because I live in the province in Ireland, to the big city, Dublin. Magisa, on my own, and then I fly, on my own. And that's normal. It's normal in Ireland, France, Thailand, China, India. Pero se Filipinas, when you go to the airport, sometimes the whole barangay goes with you. Sometimes you have jeepney loads of people going with you all the way to the airport just to say goodbye. I cannot think of another country that does that. That for me is Walang Iwanan. To the very last moments, your loved ones in the Philippines want to be there for you, to say goodbye to you, to let them, to let you know how much they love you. And that, that is so beautiful. That is really Walang Iwanan. And I could go on and on. I actually wrote books about this. I have many more stories and stories. But I really believe there's something special in every single Filipino. And I'm ble I really am a better man because of the Filipino. So people, especially my mama and nanai, she, her dream is for me to go back, be normal, Anuk. <laughs> go back to Ireland and be normal. And I said, Hinde, my dream is to bring my mama to the Philippines so she can see what I see every single day. So brand potential, the Filipinas. So brand opportunity, the Filipinas. I want my mom to see that, so she doesn't worry about me anymore. Because my, my future is in the Philippines. Because I, I really believe the greatest day of the Philippines is ahead, the future. A day where no Filipino is forced to leave their country because of lack of opportunities at home. It, it happened to my country, where Irish people were forced to leave, no opportunities to home. They had to go all around the world, just like the overseas Filipino. And I have a dream. And I'm sure you have the dream that one day you will, you will have the choice to become world class in your country. And yes, you've given so much to the world. You've given so much to this country. You've given so much to my country. But I think the greatest victory of the Filipino lies ahead in the future. So I have such great, great dreams for this country. Great dreams for the Filipino. And I really believe the greatest days of the Philippines lies ahead. So. I could talk for hours and hours, but I would love to, like, I want to hear it from you, because I'm not here to promote myself. Uh, just before we started this, I was talking to Anthony and, and Coach Adam and his brother Mike. I want to feature you guys. My books, my, our videos are all about Filipinos, all about uh, Filipinos and foreigners that love the Philippines. So I don't want the attention from, to be on me. I really want to hear your stories and maybe we can use our social media to help 
um, more people, especially if your businesses. Uh, I really am a huge passion for Filipino businesses because I know um, what I learned from Sir Gao, a lot of Filipinos are taught to be job seekers yeah. and they're discouraged from setting up their own businesses. And I, I want to change that. I really believe we need more Filipinos like you, Coach Adam, setting up their own businesses. And that, that is really how the Philippines and Filipinos around the world can change when more Filipinos say, you know what, I can be the boss. I can set up my own company. I can be, I'm more of class because I'm a Filipino. So our mission today is to help Filipinos break free from any false belief. Maling alkala. Marami namamatay ng maling alkala. False beliefs the whole Filipino, Filipinos back from the potential. That's what me and Mary, say hello Mary. Mary let's give a round of applause to Mary, she's my co-founder of Vice and Pinon. And me, Mary, our team, Gao from Philca, that's all we want to do. Help Filipinos break free from any false belief that's holding them back from their potential. So they can become successful, they can become abundant, and just what God planned for every single Filipino, a great future, a bond in the future, and a blessed future. And we would love, to, any way we can help you guys, we're here to really serve the Filipino community here in the UAE. So please, I'm really excited for the Q&A and how I can learn from you and how we, how we can help promote your causes, yeah. promote your businesses, yeah. so that more and more Filipinos can live that, that, uh, that potential life that they know they can achieve. So I'm excited, I want to stop talking, because I talk too much. Yeah. It was not in Tagalog Co. <laughs> and I want to hand over to Gao for a Q&A session. Yeah. Is that okay with you guys? Sure. Okay, so thank you, Sir Gao. All right, so like Tony said, I have a lot of applause before I forget. You can sit down the mic now so you can relax, because later on you're going to be real, I guess. Well, um, I would like to take this story from you. Is I've been listening to this talk for quite some time already. The uh, story of the butterfly, I forgot to tell about it. Uh, did you know that butterfly, did they know how beautiful the, these uh, wings are? This is the same thing that we are. Uh, a lot of Filipinos were crying about this one when we started talking about this type of stories. We fail to realize how beautiful we are and how great we should be and grateful for the things that we can and our capabilities are. So we don't have to feel second class one way or another. We are not better than other people. Same goes with them. We are all equal. We have all talents and competence. And I would like to hold that because of that thought, I realized I think I can make a little difference on my own little way. That's why I brought him here, forcing him to go here. <laughs> anyway, so um, without further ado, I would like to start questioning with our lady <laughs> in the front. Uh, so we would like to take the opportunity for a question and answer. So you can grasp as much as information you would like, and inspirations or a thought that you would like my program to tell about. All right, huh? start with you. With the books that you have published, um, what do you think are the most important things, us Filipinos, that can learn from it? So, that, um, so the question I got asked was, what's the most important takeaways from the books? Hmm. Let me, I could, so I need to be careful because I could spend one hour answering this question. You so have to pick one or two. I will pick one thing. I, I am not a preacher. I'm not a priest. I'm not claiming to be better than anyone. If anything, the purpose of me writing these books and our videos online is to remind Filipinos. I'm a reminder-er. <laughs> uh, because just like Sir Gao said, a lot of Filipinos tend to forget their talents, tend to forget the beauty of their country, tend to forget. So I guess the purpose of me writing these books is not to give new information, but to help Filipinos remember, oh yeah, we are special with Bainia. We are special with Kapatira, Madaskalpe, and Masayani. So what I want to be is a reminder. Um, one thing I notice, and especially you guys in media, you will relate to this. Sometimes, well, most times, that when you hear Philippines in the world news, it's a negative. There's a negative story. It could be about crime, corruption, murder, a natural disaster. So the most time that when Philippines gets word headlines, it's a negative story about the Philippines or the Filipino people. Even Metro Manila, 
is a negative, it's usually a bad story. I, I believe that's not fair. I, that's, uh, that really hurts me when I see on social media and with the big news agencies, they focus on the negative news. But I don't believe that's, that's fair. Because for one negative story written about the Philippines, there's 100, 1,000 positive stories that don't get talked about. 1,000 stories of everyday Bayini hand, of everyday Kapatira and of everyday Walangunan. And there is an unfair bias towards the negative news. And the world seems to forget about the positive news. So we're not ignoring the negative, I'm not saying it, crime doesn't exist, I'm not saying bad things don't happen in the Philippines. What I'm saying is there is 1,000 good stories for every one bad story. So I want to highlight the positive news that's in the Philippines. The positive stories of OFWs, like the ones I'm looking at right now. Coach Rico, you're writing a book about this. You really inspired me. I want my, one of my next books, I want to do what just Rico is doing, writing about successful overseas Filipinos that are achieving extraordinary things. So my, my number one answer to your question is, I want to remind Filipinos, not preach, not give them new information, but just remind them that, wow, Filipinos can achieve great things if they believe, if they believe. So that's, that would be my one answer to your great question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Next question. All right, hi, uh, Mike. Uh, Coach. Uh, well, um, you opened your statement earlier that you said um, so many people already ask you why the Philippines and that says something about the Filipinos that they, they have a doubt, they have a little doubt, why us? Because they don't believe in themselves and I want you to answer that if I, if, if, if you know, it's why not? Why not? Why not us? Right? So uh, I want to thank you personally you said uh, uh, it's, it's a different feeling that other people believe in us because uh, not every one of us believe in each other and that's uh, it's a big, it's a monumental uh, uh, thing for us to know that there are people who believe in us I think that's, that's the reason why sometimes we fail because nobody believes in us and that uh, the fact is, we don't believe in ourselves as well. So I would like to personally thank you for that. So, uh, in connection with that, I want I want to ask, what is your vision for the Filipino? Because I think Filipinos need that to have that vision that they can achieve something. I want I want to ask, what is your vision for the Filipino people? My vision for the Philippines in one sentence? Yes. A first world Philippines in our lifetime. A first world Philippines in our lifetime. I am so confident this can be done. Because the, num the only thing, the number one thing that needs to change is, I'm not talking about politics, I'm not going to enter that dangerous conversation, is mindset. You have the youngest population, one of the youngest populations in the world, the medium age is 24. We can really influence our youth to think differently about their country. And you were at the golden age. Remember, Philippines was one of the richest countries in Asia at the end of World War II, wasn't that correct? One of the richest countries in Asia. And I really believe that this generation of Filipinos can turn around. And to give one concrete example of that, um, you know an organization called uh, Gawad Kalinga? Gawad Kalinga, they're one of my, they, that's a Filipino organization that is proving that even the, the most difficult slum areas of Manila and the most challenging areas of the provinces, people can be transformed. Transformed by the spirit of Bayanihan. Transformed by the spirit of Kapatiran. And they're living examples of communities that can really transform themselves if given in the right environment. So that's evidence number one. Evidence number two, I'll just keep this very short, is Filipino entrepreneurs. Filipino small business owners. I always tell uh, my Filipinos, stop idolizing foreign brands. Um, so many of my Filipino friends would prefer to go to, I don't know, Starbucks than support, I don't know, Post Coffee. They prefer foreign chocolate versus local Filipino chocolate. And that mindset has to change. 
if, if the Philippines is going to become a first world economy, we need to support more, we need to be intentionally looking for, is this made in the Philippines? Is this a Filipino um, local businesses? And there's so many examples of world-class Filipino businessmen and businesswomen that are producing work. My favorite chocolate is Filipino. My favorite coffee is Filipino. Um, human nature, it's one of the Filipino products for my hair. That's why my hair is so good. <laughs> it's all Filipino products. So I, I believe that the vision of this country is the first world Philippines in our lifetime. And the evidence of that is Filipinos, not foreigners, that are making a stand for their country. And we will absolutely, I believe, we will see it in our lifetime. Okay. I'm interested in the, the Facebook uh, post of your press conference, and this attracted my attention because this is exactly related to the book that I am writing. I am actually writing the 12 character traits of highly effective OFWs because normally if we say an OFW, the reality is OFW overworked by, but financially weak. And I'd like to transform that to another OFW which is overpaid financially wealthy. Yes. And the second book that we have, have it that will change the Filipinos. And I'm a proud Filipinos because before coming here, I used to work in Saipan. And you said it right, if the Filipino workforce will pull out of one country, business will be down. And that, that's how important a Filipino workforce is. And I'd like to share with you Dr. Landa Hokano's word about a Filipino to reinforce the thing which mentioned the resiliency of a Filipino. They said, a Filipino is like a mythological bamboo that sways valiantly among the winds of misfortune, only to rise again and scatter when the tempest is over, only to face and meet the warm of the morning sun. We, that's how Filipinos are. And my question, Mark, is, you know, WIIFM, normally if we do something, like, what's in it for me, right? Since you talk about how good the Filipinos are and how beautiful the Philippines is as a country, what do you expect in return by writing good about our country? Wow. Very good question. Thank you, Rick. I love that question. So I want to be very direct. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Quality of life in the Philippines. Number one, quality of life. Number two, meaning, purpose. I worked in Africa for two years. Um, I worked in this hospital, one of the poorest hospitals in, the, in Africa, in a place called Tanzania. And what I learned from my two years there, and I worked with Filipinos in that time, the secret to living is giving. In my early 20s, I'll be honest, my number one motive was me, a comismo. Me, 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 money for me, entertainment for me. Uh, very much obsessed with myself. And my experiences in Africa, and my experience meeting OFWs around the world, I started to change my mindset. Wait a second, life is not about self. I started to believe more in God, and I realized, wait a second, I cannot continue to live so selfishly. So my greatest joy in life is through giving. And I know that if I go back to my old way of being so, I was so selfish, but I was just a normal spoiled kid. That's not going to make me happy. That's going to make me empty here. And I know lots of rich people in Makati City and other rich cities around the world where they may be very wealthy, but inside is very empty. So the greatest joy I get in life is, because my background is teaching. I'm sure there's teachers here, coach, coach, mentors. The greatest joy I get in life is not money, is not through being famous, but it's seeing someone go from here to here. Seeing someone that when they go into your gym, they're depressed, they're looking down on themselves, they don't have the self-confidence, and to see them get to the next level, the joy that must give you as a coach, when you're mentoring someone, uh, the joy, there's no greater feeling to know that in some tiny way, you created an environment that influenced them to get to the next level. So I believe, like, back in Ireland, no one's gonna listen to me. <laughs> I don't get the, the same, how uh, you say, the same, in, I could go to any other country, I'm not going to make the impact that I'm going to make in the Philippines. And not because I'm better, but because I really believe, number one, 
this is where I can have my great, my, I can reach my potential in the Philippines, and number two, I can reach more people in the Philippines, especially in the schools. You know, the, the school kids, the element, the batas, they all make fun of me. They think I look like Ed Sheeran. They think I look like the Alaska kids <laughs> with my, my hair. But when we share the message with the Filipino youth, it re I know it touches their hearts. So the, what, so the what's in it for me is that I get to share this message with people and get to see them move from here to here. There's no greater feeling in the world. So that's what's in it for me, it's, it's service. The, the, the secret to living is giving. And no amount of money or no amount of quality of life in foreign countries can take that away from me. I want to help you, especially the Filipino youth, get to the next level. And that's the greatest feeling in the world. Great question. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are grateful because uh, you visited and uh, you, you emphasized the importance of Filipinos or being a Filipino. And with that, I'm thinking also like what else maybe your other advocacies aside from promoting of how to become or how to become or how being a Filipino. And uh, secondly, since here in Dubai, Northern Emirates or the entire UAE, most of us here, our purpose is uh, to work to find job, to earn money for our family. So I just want you to, I want to know from you is like, how are you going to encourage OFW to go out from the shell and uh, feel that uh, what you mentioned that we should not be all the time be under the bosses, but um, we have to go out and change the perspective of this world that Filipinos can be a boss, Filipinos can be in this high class, Filipinos are very competitive because I would like also to add on uh, my boss uh, in the bank she always told me like why Filipinos why 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 Filipinos wanted always on the second position you don't want to be in the high position I don't know why so that's that's the thing is that we wanted uh, to ask from you or oh, how are you going to encourage Filipinos or what points that you're going to talk to us in order for us to get out from the shell that's it. Thank you, Erickson. It's a great question. One of the I've spoken to over 100,000 Filipinos now. Probably 120. We did all the numbers, especially in the, in the Philippines. And the one thing that keeps me awake at night is, are they really? Yes, it's a, people are feeling good after the talks. But what if on Monday morning they go back to normal? and nothing changes. That's my great nightmare. That's, uh, I don't want to make people just feel good, feeling good, feeling good, back to normal. That, that's my great nightmare. So that's why I'm obsessed with habits. That's why when I found out that Coach Adam has a gym and he's teaching people new habits, I was fascinated to learn from him. Because that's the greatest, the wisest decision an OFW can make in your time here. Let's say it's three years or 10 years. The smartest decision you can ever make is invest in yourself. I think overseas Filipinos, I, I admire them so much, but they tend to neglect themselves more than anyone else. They think they tend to think more of their family and they tend to work too hard and and neglect themselves. Neglect their health, number one, and neglect their mind, number two. So if anything I want to encourage Filipinos, this, the best thing you can do is invest in your mind. Invest in your body. Go to a gym. <laughs> I'm really, I'm not, we just met, but oh, get healthy. Number two, how can you go to places like Philcat? The reason I wanted to partner with Philcat, we have the same message. Invest more skills, more opportunities. Become more valuable. Read books. If you don't want to read books, videos on YouTube, it's all free. You can read just for 10 minutes every morning. The smartest decision. You talk about highly effective. I, I'm excited to read this man's book, but I'm sure one of those 12 values is about self-learning, is about investing in your mind, about getting ahead. Because it, positive thinking is not enough on its own. You have to convert that into action. So one of my things I'm looking forward to tomorrow in Abu Dhabi is the big event that Philicat is having for their students, their recent graduates who are having a big celebration. Because I really believe the smartest OFWs are those that invest in their mind and their body. So my number one advice was, don't just feel good about yourself and go back to normal. 
look for communities, just like the communities you create, where you can, you can together, through the spirit of Bayanihan, invest in yourself so that when you do go back to the Philippines, for example, you can be the leaders. The Philippines really needs the OFWs to return, to become the leaders, to become the bosses, not to rely on someone else. So the smartest decision you'll ever make is investing in yourself, especially with our friends in Philippines. So thank you, Erickson. That's a great question. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. As Filipino, like uh, you, you um, give a message to us how important we are and how to move on with our lives as a Filipino. So my first question is, uh, as, as your follower, you always watch after your top 10 things about the Filipino. This time, are you gonna, are you gonna write or talk about the OFWs that you met all over UAE or anywhere else in the world? And my second question is, you are starting to be famous in the Philippines. If by any chance the government will give you a post, like an ambassador for peace or something like that, would you accept it? Wow, I never... That second question shocked me. I've never been asked that before. Let, let me ask the first question. So as much as possible, I want to feature overseas Filipinos. Um, I want to promote... In, the, in this trip, if Sir Gao will allow me, I want to make as many, many videos I, like just before this started, I was talking to Coach Adam, and I'm going to make a five-minute video with him after this because I want to promote his story. I want to promote your story, ma'am. I know you have a story of resilience, of falling down, but getting back up again. Every overseas Filipino has those stories. So, yes, number one, I want to promote the overseas Filipino in any way I can, especially through videos because that's really the future of social media through videos. The second question, uh, wow. If Mr. Duterte asked me personally, <laughs> any way I can help the Philippines. If someone, whether it be a government or would it be a private company, if, like Karuti, I partner with our friends in Karuti. And I, the reason I partner with them is because we share the same values. So I, I will only partner with organizations who share the same values of a better Philippines for all. So I would be happy to any organization, Philcads, Karuti, and Mr. Duterte and the Philippine government, any organization that loves the Filipino, wants the best of the Filipinos, I'd be happy to be an ambassador to echo that message. So, what I'm problem at Palace Thank you. Okay, last question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I actually asked that question when I went to the Philippines. But I heard an answer from the crowd why not us? That's a good answer enough for us. I mean, why not us? Not about a negative way of why you choose us. There's no question about it. That alone is a mind setting that you should, cha you should change. You should always think about that there's an opportunity and huge competence and um, uh, capacity that we can offer. Therefore, the question should not be why, why us. The question is it should be us. That's that alone is my setting. So that, that's the main goal of my organizations, also with, with partnering with my program is to, ch to change the mindset of our Kababayan and thinking it in a different way. It, we didn't say you change your um, mind at all, but the approach of questioning would be a different way of being able to answer this question alone from yourself. Eh? That was, uh, I, asked, uh, I heard a question, what else? Oh, Microven can be can do. Microven is not limited to leadership speaking. He's a business graduate, he's a chemi chemical engineer as well. So this is an entrepreneurial capability, skills, learning that we are offering that Microven can do to companies from small businesses to a huge one because he's doing a CEO, breakfast CEO with Microven in the Philippines already. There are a lot of Filipino businesses here. Why not first the Filipino community? Well, uh, we are going to have our breakfast with CEO, Filipino CEOs, why not, right? So uh, th these are kind of thing of dreaming big and making that a reality because dreaming is not enough. So making that happen changes everything. So that kind of wraps up the, the whole conversation. So I, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the media. You will be having a bigger role in reaching out to most of the that we have here. We are just a tool. I, I basically brought him here 
to have a face-to-face -face contact with you. Because that is, as a marketing person, that still the best approach to reach out and feel the sincerity. Because that, 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 that's my, that's my uh, biggest uh, factor of consideration why I have to bro brought in here. The feeling of being my, hearing Mike personally makes a huge difference. We know all of this, I'm sure, but we have to be reminded yes. always, and we need that. So that's the reason why Mike Brogan is here. So uh, I would like to, I do not want to uh, expound more on this. I would like to thank everyone, uh, the media, please spread the word for us. It is for us. Not for anyone else. It's for our betterment. It's for our good. Talk about good things. Of what you can do. Talk about the competence and, 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 and how we are good at and the values that we should be keeping in. Okay. Um, I heard kapatiran ng bayanian, fellow Filipinos, OFWs. We are in the same blood, running to our veins. We are not different among others. So we should be together because together we are actually stronger, right? So this is the carrying words that I would like to spread with. So, uh, uh, thank you again, Little Manila, for giving. Thank you, Little Manila, or Sir Ken. Sir Ken, thank you so much for giving this opportunity to us. And I hope one way or another we inspire the, our staff there, Kababayan, and the one who are having lunch. <laughs> and um, uh, we have, I know, I think you have to mention this. Yes, yes. So I couldn't come here without the partners that have helped make this happen. So of course, Sir Gao and Phil Cat. I'm so excited for tomorrow's big celebration event. And, and, and his consulting company, GSC. Uh, Hawthorne Suites, we're staying in. I love that place. I used the gym this morning. Little Vanilla, thank you so much. This is not little, this is huge. <laughs> And last night we were in Rice Overdose as well. I love supporting Filipino companies. And we were, was it yesterday we had lunch in a small little restaurant called Mikey's. And it's not just because it's called Mikey's, but it was Sarap Sarap Sarap. And Favorito Baca and Dito, the one. So thank you, Mikey's. And last but not least, Expat Media. Where's ma'am? She's gone. Kabayan Weekly, we just came from there. And did I get everyone? Oh, the Karuti, our friends at Karuti, I interviewed Sir Tariq. I'm looking forward to meeting him later. And of course, the Philippine Business Council that are sponsoring our, our, CEO, our CEO seminars. So I've, I've really got a bias. I really want to, yes, I could work with the, some of the foreign companies and I don't know, for a lot more expensive, but my number one priority is the Filipino community, the Filipino businesses, even the small business, even if you just got three or four, two employees, any way I can help the small, um, the small to medium to large Filipino businesses is a passion of mine. So it's a great honor. I could not be here without the support. And then on the big one, next February, in this city and of course in Abu Dhabi, we want to do a big event. And do you know what the name of the event is? Nuxating and Mo. World class Filipino. That's the name of the event. In February 2008, a big, big event. Hundreds of Filipinos we want at that event. And that's going to be very special. Thanks to Philcat for making that happen. Make it thousands. Thousands. <laughs> hundreds are too small. But before I go, I'm regalo, co parasillo. I want to make sure everyone leaves here with at least one, if not two, copies of this. For one for you and for your fellow Kai vegan that's not here. Is that, make sure you won't forget that a signed copy of this book before you leave as a gift, as a big, big thank you for making time to come here and to listen to this message. It really is the greatest time in history to be in the Philippines, to be in OFW, and the greatest days of the Philippines lies ahead. Mabuhay, Filipino! Mabuhay!